Hey everyone, this is Cardell, and we're going to do a, hopefully a short and succinct video on how to uh, check if your motherboard is compatible with a processor. And this, a lot of the times it's on people trying to upgrade or buy a new machine and they get a motherboard that's in their price range and they get like a CPU that says it's compatible with on whatever website you're using like PC Part Picker or some other custom build page. Uh, but you really want to check on the manufacturer's website. And I'm going to show you where all the little pages and information is. And I'm going to use three different boards to show you um, kind of what you could be expecting. So we've got an Intel board. Uh, we've got a uh, uh, Ryzen board from Gigabyte. And then everybody's favorite, the Tomahawk Max. So we're going to start with the Tomahawk Max and show you how to find what you're looking for. So you basically type in Google the model of it just copy and paste it from whatever site so you just b450 tomahawk 5 or tomahawk max and there's an msi link website which brings you to this page so this page here is the all the specs and stats on the uh, motherboard it also has the exact specifications uh, if you click on the specifications up here you can see all the like data specs like what kind of ram so if you're looking for RAM compatibilities, that it will do. Uh, here's your basic standards for the third gen Ryzen. Here's all your OC modes and stuff. And anything that's like second and under, that's what you can expect. So you can go up to 344, whereas you can go 4133 on third gen. So things like that, that's where, where that kind of information is on here. Um, and all, all kinds of other cool stuff. For the CPU compatibility, you go to the support tab. Now every manufacturer has a general layout that looks like this they all have overview or, or gigabytes it's key features but there's always specification and support so on support for MSI they have a um, couple pages that you want to pay attention to there's the dry, uh, BIOS version page which is where you download all your BIOS versions and then there is the compatibility for the CPU which tells you what BIOS version supports what processor so we'll start with the CPU we go down to compatibility over here and we'll get to the other sites later and just make sure you're on the CPU and we scroll down so let's say you're getting a 3600 a Ryzen 5 3600 so we go down here and here's our 3600 and it is version 7c02 v30 okay so that we keep that in mind so v30 and what we're going to do is we're going to go down to the downloads page to the BIOS and you can see the newest one is V3.6 but if we go down to the very bottom we've got V3.0 so now we know those two numbers are the same so in this case with a 3600 we do not need to update the BIOS it is compatible with the release of the motherboard so let's go into the gigabyte version this is the B450 Aorus motherboard uh, pro Wi-Fi, blah, 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 it's amazing. We go down to the support, and we go to CPU support, and we're going to do the same thing. So our Ryzen 5 3600, right here, here's our 3600, is a F40, okay? I see an F1 here, so that immediately, in my head, I, I know that I need a BIOS update. So let's go see what's involved in this. So we go to our downloads, and we scroll down, to BIOS and so here is F40 so it says uh, note if you're using QFlash to update make sure you've updated to F32 before F40 so on this board not only do you have to update to F40 you have to do F32 first now sometimes this is because they change the way BIOS is saved and the format of the BIOS file so you want to make sure that you're upgrading it as in like the highest intervals you can until you hit stuff like this, right? So let's go to 32. So this here has no extra notes. So you would download F32. Number one, you'd have to have a compatible CPU with this motherboard um, because it will not Q flash. You need to get into the BIOS. And in order to get into the BIOS, you have to have a compatible CPU. So you will need a compatible CPU in the CPU compatibility list to do this. You would update to 32, and then once that's done, you can update to F40, 
and then you can put your uh, Ryzen 5 3600 in and then it should post and let you get into the BIOS. Uh, from there you could you know further upgrade your BIOS if you have other compatibility issues. Um, okay so that's Ryzen. Let's do one board of Intel. So we're going to go to the B365M DS3H. We're going to go over to our support. And the amazing CPU support page. And uh, we'll say you're getting a 9700K. Let's do that. So 9700K is right here. So it's got two listed. Uh, they both have F2 as a version. I see an F1 here. So I know that I'm going to have to have uh, a new uh, a BIOS update. So let's just go to the downloads and let's check this out. We go down to BIOS. The very first release is F1 as suspected. And then F2 is the next one and there's quite a few other ones past this but this is support of 9th gen. Uh, this update driver, this is probably, and I don't know for sure, but this is probably a Windows driver so if you are doing a fresh Windows install you won't have to worry about this you can just flash the BIOS and then download your uh, drivers from the website uh, afterwards um, for all manufacturers after you are done doing your BIOS updates I would not use the CD in the uh, the motherboard that came with it because it's gonna have drivers for the old BIOS the original whatever it came with right so make sure that you go to the drivers and you download like your audio, right? And you download your chipset drivers, okay? And you download your LAN drivers, your updated Realtek LAN drivers for this board, for example. Um, yeah, and that's pretty much it. Unless you're doing a RAID setup, you can usually ignore the SATA. Uh, any of the regular SATA controllers are on the chipset, in this chipset drivers itself. Uh, but if you are doing a RAID setup with your SSDs or hard drives, make sure you do get the RAID drivers as well. Same with like a Ryzen. If we come to the drivers page, we select our operating system and we've got your onboard P, whatever, IDE, SATA drivers. Okay, so you've got that, your chipsets, your audio, and your LAN. So this one here does have a RAID driver in here, so you can or cannot, or you can ignore it if you want. And then you have your chipset, audio, and LAN. Make sure you download them from the website. Do not use the CD. So that's pretty much how you uh, look all this stuff up from start to finish. Uh, I hope that helps and clears up any confusion. Um, hopefully this will all go away. Um, yeah, good luck, and uh, we'll see you guys on the subreddit.